Hey everyone, this video is going to be a little different from my regular handheld calculator videos. Today I'm going to talk about the Unix desktop calculator application, otherwise known as DC. And DC is interesting for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, it has a fascinating history. It was developed in around 1970 and it's one of the oldest Unix utilities and it's the oldest language on modern Unix systems. It even predates the C programming language. DC is also interesting because of its ubiquity. It comes with most every flavor of Unix, including Linux, and it also comes in stores in Mac OS X. And you might even have it on Windows if you have the Windows subsystem for Linux or Sigwin installed. But as common as it is, most Unix and Mac users uh, never use DC directly. DC is also interesting because of its elegant design. It's designed very loosely to simulate an RPN desktop calculator and it implements macros which are similar to keystroke programs. And although DC doesn't support labels or loops explicitly, it does support conditionals and recursion and can be used as a Turing complete programming language, albeit an esoteric one. And finally, DC is interesting because it implements arbitrary precision arithmetic. And this makes uh, it very unusual for an interactive calculator application. And it makes it able to perform very high precision calculations, and also calculations with very large numbers. So DC was created originally by Robert Morris in around 1970 or 71 while he was at Bell Labs. And Bob Morris was an important figure in the development of Unix. As well as DC, he also developed the password scheme for Unix authentication, uh, the standard math library, and also the uh, crypt des encryption program. And the desktop calculator was originally written in the B language, and one, it was one of the first programs to run on Unix on Bell Labs PDP-11, and it was in the first edition Unix manual in November 1971. And the original version of DC supported just integer math, but later Morris worked with Lorinda Cherry, another early Unix developer at Bell Labs, on enhancements to DC as well as BC, the basic calculator, uh, to support floating point arithmetic and other functions. And DC would have been very loosely inspired by HP's early desktop RPM calculators, such as the HP uh, 9100A and B. Uh, but the algorithms used would have been very different. Uh, HP's early calculators used the Quartic algorithm, uh, which could be implemented efficiently on very simple hardware. So DC in the Unix tradition is a command line program designed to do one thing well, and it can be used interactively, or you can pass it an expression to evaluate, or a name of a file to evaluate. Uh, but we'll start using uh, DC interactively. And so DC is a reverse polished notation calculator and works on an unbounded stack. Uh, so say to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4, uh, we would enter 2, 3, and 4 on the stack, uh, and then multiply and plus, uh, just like you would on a handheld RPN calculator. And the result will be left on the stack, and we can print it out using the P command. Uh, you can also print out the full stack using F, uh, and you can clear the stack using C. Like many calculators, DC distinguishes between negative and minus characters. So to enter a negative number in DC, you begin the number with an underscore. Uh, so let's say we wanted to multiply minus 10 by 5. Uh, we would enter underscore 10, uh, and then 5, and then multiply. And to calculate powers, uh, we can use the caret or hat symbol. So to calculate 2 to the power of 8, we enter 2, 8, and then hat and p. And DC can support very large numbers. So for example, I can raise 10 uh, to the power of 10 million. And then uh, subtract 1. And DC can rapidly output the 10 million digits of the result. Supports integer arithmetic in basis between 10 and 16. Uh, so with DC you can set an input radix and an output radix. So say we wanted to convert between hex and decimal, uh, we can set our input radix to 16 using the i command. 
Uh, and now we can push hex decimal numbers onto the stack uh, and they'll get printed out in decimal. Or, or say we could set the output uh, to binary. And uh, negative numbers are always represented using uh, the minus symbol. So with DC, there's no simulation of word size or one or two's complement. As well as large numbers, DC also supports arbitrary precision to the right of the decimal place. Uh, but by default, this precision in DC is set to zero. Uh, so say if we divide uh, one by three, uh, the result is truncated to zero, and some might get confused and think that DC only supports integer arithmetic, but this is not the case. So to set the precision, uh, you push your desired value on the stack and use the K command. Uh, so let's set our precision to 30, uh, and we'll re-evaluate 1 over 3 again. Uh, and we can even set K to uh, a million. and DC will uh, print out a million threes. If you're a developer, you might be wondering how this is implemented because typically calculator programs store reals using standard floating point formats that are quite limited. Uh, and so typically a number might be stored in IEEE uh, 754 double precision format using 64 bits. And this typically gives uh, 15 digits of precision. And even if you're using quadruple precision uh, floating point numbers, uh, like on the Swiss Micros DM42, uh, you would get around 34 digits of precision, uh, but a million digits of precision. And so DC implements its own arbitrary precision numeric data type. Uh, and the modern GNU version of DC stores numbers as an array of bytes, each representing a single digit, along with a scaling factor, uh, which is the number of digits after the decimal. DC supports memory registers, each named by a single character. And so to store the number from the top of the stack in register X, uh, we enter SX, and this will pop the value off the stack. And to load the value from register X and push it onto the stack, uh, we can enter LX. And each register also contains its own stack. And this is useful since it allows registers uh, to have simulated scope like local variables. Uh, so it's possible to store a value in a register and pop it off when it's no longer needed. And this store and load commands have uppercase variants, uh, which also include a stack pop. Uh, so uh, uppercase LX. Uh, pushes the value in register x and pops it off uh, x's stack. Uh, and now um, x should be empty. DC can operate on strings as well as on numbers, uh, but the only thing you can do with strings are print them and execute them as macros. And strings are delimited using square brackets. So to push a string hello onto the stack and print it, uh, we would into uh, open screw bracket, hello, close screw bracket, and then P. And macros in DC are just strings that are designed to be executed using the X command. So say if we push a number onto the stack, uh, we can declare a simple macro that increments the current stack value and uh, prints the result. And we can execute uh, that macro to see the result. And I've included spaces between the commands to make them a bit more readable, uh, but they're not technically required, so I could enter that as this. Macros in DC are usually stored in registers, so let's store our macro into the I register. And now we can just run it by loading it onto the stack and executing it. And macros can prompt for input using the question mark command, uh, but that only works if DC is running the code from a file, because in an interactive mode, the question mark command will try to interpret any characters that are entered after it in the console. 
And so I've created a DC script uh, which calculates the full distance equation, uh, the distance an object falls in uh, time t. And so it starts by prompting uh, for uh, the time uh, using the p command. Uh, and then the question mark command uh, prompts for a line of input uh, and stores it in register t. Uh, the script then prints out uh, distance and then calculates the distance uh, the object falls uh, by loading the value from the t register, uh, squaring it, then multiplying it by half times the gravitational constant and printing out the result. And so uh, to run that uh, script, we can use the dash f command, uh, and we can enter our time, so let's say 10 seconds, uh, and the object falls 490 meters in that time. And interestingly, since the question mark command executes uh, any line of input you enter, you can actually enter in DC expressions as inputs. Uh, so let's say uh, and so you can implement a REPL loop in DC. And macros in DC support conditions and recursion and a simple example of this is the factorial function and with DC we need to break this up into two recursive macros. Uh, and so the F macro implements the termination condition of the factorial function, uh, testing the value against 1. And it starts by duplicating uh, the input value uh, and then uh, comparing it uh, against 1. Uh, and the character after the test is the macro to run if the test is true. Uh, so in this case it will run the, the G macro and otherwise it will terminate and leave value 1 on the stack. Uh, and the g macro also uh, duplicates the stack value. Uh, it subtracts 1 and then multiplies the original stack value uh, by the result of recursively calling uh, the f macro. And so if I push 1 onto the stack uh, and then execute uh, the factorial macro, uh, the 1 is left on the stack, uh, but if we push 3 uh, and execute the factorial macro, uh, we get 6. Uh, and again, DC supports arbitrary size numbers uh, that we can run through factorial, um, so let's choose, say, 1000. And DC doesn't support scientific operations directly, uh, but it's not difficult to implement uh, trigonometric and other operations uh, by, say, evaluating Taylor series. DC also supports arrays, uh, so it's possible to implement algorithms that use indirect addressing. So DC is a fascinating Unix command line utility and language that can be useful in many situations. It's obviously useful for those writing Unix shell scripts, uh, but if you're used to RPN, uh, you can find it quite handy calculator to use interactively too, especially for base conversions. And the DC language is a great way to create quick programs to solve numeric problems or to test algorithms designed for keystroke programmable calculators. And it's also useful when you want to do arithmetic with very large or high precision numbers, uh, which is particularly useful for encryption and other security related algorithms and so it was no doubt a useful tool for Bob Morris who was a mathematics and security specialist uh, who later uh, went on to work as a chief scientist at the NSA uh, and Bob Morris also later owned an HP 21 uh, the successor to the HP 35 and so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful 